Hey, how you doing today? I am Tequila Coleman. In today's video, I want to talk about, you know, what happens if your prodigal marries a counterfeit. You know, did God lie? Is God the author of confusion? I want to talk about this because um, I just seen the comment. Someone had replied to a comment that was left on one of my videos. And, um, you know, I get I had got the notification. And so I was reading the, um, the comment, um, the original comment, and... So I'm making this video for the one who left the original comment. I'm not going to say your name, but you would know that this video is for you because you were stating in your comment how the person you were standing for, you were praying and fasting for this person. God told you that this is your God ordained spouse, um, only for this particular person to go and marry um, a blind, you know, uh, he been engaged to for the past four years, right? And so, you know, you, you're like, this shattered me. Um, you know, you thought that this was your person. Um, and I'm trying to remember your comment, you know, you were basically saying how you always wanted someone to do ministry with. Um, and you was like, I, I remember the ending part because you said, I thought God is an author of confusion. Well, God is an author of confusion. You know, um, when you take a look at it, when God spoke to you and told you that this is your God ordained spouse, did you feel confusion or did you feel peace? Clarity, you know, like what did you feel in that moment, right? And when you found out your God ordained spouse went in and, and married the counterfeit, what did you feel in that moment? You felt confusion. You felt, um, you know, your heart was breaking. You felt shattered, right? So the confusion is coming from your prodigal, not from God, okay? That's the first thing I want to just, you know, just make everyone aware of because when prodigals begin to show up, you know, like their prodigal self, that doesn't mean that this is God, you know, confusing you. No, God isn't the author of confusion, okay? God cannot lie. So God told you that this is your um, spouse. Now, I'm going to tell you something, okay? Because God told you that this is your spouse. I'm sure God have already revealed to your prodigal who you are to them. But because they are a prodigal, a prodigal, um, one of the consequences or the curses that comes upon prodigals when they are disobedient to the Lord is they are now given over to a reprobate mind. So they have a mind of no understanding. Okay. So you have to understand. Okay. And you got to really look at your spouse. Okay. Your spouse is a prodigal. What this means is your spouse just chose to marry a counterfeit Okay, and he chose this counterfeit because he is up under a mind that has no understanding, a reprobate mind. Okay, so I, I got to break this down this way so that you can begin to really see the enemy at work. Okay, and really begin to see that God didn't lie the first time. Okay, if that is your spouse, you know, it's still going to come to pass. Now, I know you're probably asking yourself, well, how? He's married. Well, I'm going to tell you something. God will allow the prodigals to have um, the counterfeits. Okay. If the, if the prodigal is, is, is unwilling to be obedient to whatever God is saying to them and they still keep on, they just set on choosing the counterfeit. They just set on choosing their type. God will allow them to have who they choosing. And I'm gonna tell you why God would allow the, the prodigals to have the one they choosing because God wants to show them. Okay. He will let them have who they choose and he will tell you to leave. And he will go ahead and let them have who they're choosing so that when they finally have the one that they're choosing, now they get to see this isn't what's best for me. They get to see this counterfeit's motive. They get to see how the two of them, they, they don't fit. They keep clashing, you know, against one another, right? You know, um... They also get to see, you know, like this isn't where my peace is at. I don't get respect with this person, you know. You know, so it's like God allows them. He allows the prodigals to have the one they're choosing so that he can reveal to them, you chose wrong. And if you want what's best, you got to get back. You got to get out of this counterfeit relationship. In your case, he has to get out. of. He got to get out of that marriage. OK, and then he got to get back in alignment with his heavenly father. And then he has to seek his heavenly father um, hand in order to have your hand in marriage. OK, so I say all this to say, I know you feel shattered. 
I know the enemy is probably, you know, telling you all type of crazy stuff right now. Like, like God lied to you, you know, saying all type of foolishness, you know, but the devil is a lie. Just go ahead and rebuke the devil out of your ear. Okay. Understand and know that, you know, God, he's going to give you the desires of your heart. You desire to have um, someone to do ministry with. So while you are still preparing, while God still is cooking up your love story, instead of placing your life on hold, instead of, instead of you know, um, allowing the devil to keep you in this sadness, feeling defeated, heartbroken, you know, state of mind, get up. Okay. I want you to get up. I want you to ask yourself, what is the first step I can take in starting my ministry? Start your ministry now because God is going to bless you for every time you cry. He's going to bless you for every time your heart was broken. He's going to give you the desires of your heart, but you got to be patient. You have to allow God to, um, you know, work this love story out the way how he he knows best okay but in the meantime i want you to get in ministry start your ministry don't wait on a man to you know come into your life to start the ministry you start it now okay because one thing i have learned just from starting my ministries right is that when I'm serving other people, I'm no longer focused on my problem. I'm no longer focusing on, you know, who my spouse is with, okay? I'm no longer, you know, like just focus all on tequila and what's going on with me because I'm serving. I'm serving other people. You know, that moves me into a space of compassion for other people to where now, you know, I'm so I'm so engulfed in, in what, they, what they got going on. You know, I just want to help. I just want to pour out, right? So... It's like a transfer of energy, you know? So I want you to get into ministry. Start your ministry now. Do it to the best of your ability. Understand and know that God is going to bless you. But in order for God to bless you, you got to get yourself in alignment to receive the blessing, okay? Deuteronomy 28 talks about God will bless you for your obedience. He will bless you in the land that he has given you. The land that God has given you, it could be the ministry, okay? But you have to start the you have to start the ministry in order to get in that land, okay? So that God can begin to pour out his blessing. Remember um the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. Um God gave him so much favor and blessed Joseph so good to where it caused Joseph to forget about his father's household, the way how his father and his brothers responded to him. That's how much favor God gave Joseph. And that's how much blessing God poured out in Joseph's life to where it caused him to forget about you know, the jealousy and how they threw him in the pit and sold him off and basically trying to murder him, right? And that's what God is going to do in your life. He's going to bless you so much to where it's going to cause you to forget about this heartache and pain. He's going to make it up to you, but you got to meet God halfway. Go ahead and start that ministry. You know, continue to um, be obedient to the Lord. Uh, continue, you know, to operate the way God tells you to operate, you know, and God is going to bring this love story back around full circle. You, all you have to do is just stay in alignment with God. That's it. Don't worry about your prodigal and who they with and when that marriage is going to come to an end, God will bring it down. If God want that marriage to come to an end, it will come to an end. Okay. So you just stay connected to your heavenly father. Okay. And, and while you're connected to him, your heavenly father, he's going to make sure that his daughter is okay. He's going to make sure, okay, that you are provided for, you are loved. God will make sure of it, okay? I'm a living witness. So I just wanted to encourage your spirit. Uh, if you're not already a part of our Facebook community, head over to Facebook. Type in the search bar, Community for God Ordained Spouses, and request to join our group so that we can love on you, we can support you, we can walk with you during this time. Uh, if you need to vent, you can do it inside of the group, okay? But whatever you do, I need you to get up out of that bed and shake off that depression, shake off that sadness, because God has greatness in store for you. He got things, he got blessings in store for you waiting on you, okay? So we got, we got work to do. Get up out of that bed, okay? So that is it. I am Tequila Coleman. I'll talk to you all real soon. Take care.